everybody, how's it going? My name's Mayuko and welcome back to my channel where we talk about tech, career, and life. So it is back to school time. I know that like it looks really different from every back to school season prior, but it's happening. Everyone's going back to school and getting their education. So today we're gonna talk about my back to school essentials. But Mayuko, you haven't been in school for a long time. Yes, I am well aware of that, but also I know that half of y'all who watch my videos are in school. And also you don't have to be like 18 to 22 in order to go back to school. You can go to school at any time in your life. So yeah, there's a lot of things going on in this video, but really I wanted to talk about what kind of environment can you create for yourself at home since a lot of people aren't physically going back to school because of Corona so that you can still get into kind of that academic studying vibe. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about a combination of like physical things that you can use to study that I really enjoy using even in my day-to-day -day life, as well as what things that you can do at home that are free to you that can create that kind of learning environment. And I also just wanted to talk about some of the physical stuff because I love stationery and I love geeking out about it too. So this is a chance for me to do so in the context of back to school. So here we go. So the first back to school essential is going to be writing tools. My writing tools largely fall into kind of two categories, one for like actually writing and taking notes and then the other to kind of help embellish and make things fun and color coded and organized. So for the first half of like the writing utensils, there's two things that I use, one of which are Muji pens. I love using the black ones in 0.38. They just glide super well. The ink doesn't run out that quickly. They're very reliable. The shape and style of them are also really pretty and kind of look great with any notebook. Even just for that alone, I am so glad that Muji came to the US. And then the second writing tool that I have is actually a fountain pen. I picked this up because a notebook that I have is made for fountain pens, so I figured why not try it out? So I have the Kaweco fountain pen and it is gorgeous. I don't exactly remember what it's called or anything, but all of the products and stuff will be linked in the description box down below so you can check that out. I really like this fountain pen. It writes super well, glides really nicely. Um, it gives me a variation of different thickness and thinness depending on how I write. And the blue ink color that I have is also really pretty and easy on the eyes. It also just feels cool to just like have a fountain pen. Like it gives me hyped about writing because I feel like having a fountain pen feels like I'm like legit writing even if I'm just writing notes and scribbles and stuff. So those are my two mains when it comes to actually writing things down. And then in the kind of fun, help organize and colorful category, I've got a couple things. First are these Stabilo pens. Holy cow, I love them. I have so many colors in them. They're really like relatively inexpensive for how many that you get. And I love the felt tipped pen of it. Uh, it's really thin tipped. It's really easy to write. They don't dry out. And all the different colors are really fun to play with. The second are these midliner pens that I picked up in Japan. I love them. I like that there is a thin tip and a thick tip so I can kind of use it as like a highlighter even and play around with different shapes. The colors I really, really like of this one and it kind of just makes it fun so that I can make certain words into headlines and kind of scribble around and make things look nice. Really, I think a lot of my writing utensils just make writing and taking notes fun. Uh, and it's fun to like be excited about writing things down with like your new shiny pens. And then also in this fun category, I've got like a small collection of washi tape. I've got a couple from Muji, which are really sleek and minimalist, but also a little bit Japanese. And then I've also got these Snoopy stickers because I love Snoopy. And I will take every chance that I get to embellish my notes in Snoopy. <laughs> So those are the things I use to write things down and take notes. Next, I wanted to talk about notebooks. So I typically tend to use two kinds of notebooks when I'm studying anything. One is kind of like my main, I drop everything in there except for like class and book notes. And so these are things like bullet journal spreads if I decide to do one one week, sometimes journal entries, sometimes just like random notes and to-do lists and drawings and thoughts and stuff that I just wanna dump. So I've got the Seven Seas Crossfield Notebook, and this is the Japan version that I bought. Apparently the squares in them are perfect for like Japanese writing or something like that. Uh, but I found this in Japan and I am in love with it. This is actually like the first notebook that I've like filled more than halfway. And you know that like sound that you get when you like fill in enough notebook pages, like this sound? 
just that like touch and the sound the feel of a like full notebook is something that i now realize i've been missing out on because i had such a hard time filling notebooks like these but yeah, I got it in this really pretty blue color. I put stickers on it. It's really easy to write. The pages are like pretty thin. Uh, and so that's, this is actually the notebook that I bought my fountain pen for. It's a little bit soft, like the pages are a little bit soft for a Muji pen because it'll kind of like bleed over to the other side. Um, but it's great for Stabilo pens, it's great for fountain pens. And I just love using this thing. So this is like my everyday notebook. The notebooks that I use to take actual class notes are campus notebooks. I think these are like really Japanese notebooks to have, but I really, really like them. I've been using them since like high school because I just bought a bunch in bulk and they are really, really great for class notes. So the thing that I like most about them is that they're really thin and small. In the days in which we are going outside and going to class physically and you're hauling a backpack full of notebooks, it was nice to have something super lightweight and small so that you're not just lugging around extra weight. I also really like the size of these notebooks and the lines of them too feel like they were like perfectly sized for my kind of handwriting. And usually I would go through like one or two of these in a semester or for a class. Uh, and then I would just have like a neat group of notebooks for any given class. I don't actually know if they sell these ones specifically, but I know this brand is still around. And if you look on like Asian stationery websites or maybe even Amazon, you can definitely still find these. What I also used to do too was just go to like my local Daiso and just get like a bunch of Japanese notebooks because they tend to be like a smaller footprint even if they have a spiral they're much smaller spirals and so they were just a little bit easier to like work with and haul around so these are kind of like my writing notes essentials I use a lot of these in college actually back in the day and I still use them whenever I'm writing things down or I'm learning a new topic my next back to school essential, which this is like an essential for like all of life, is a phone case. And I have a couple of cases from Casetify that I really wanna show you today, which is like now like a staple of mine in my everyday life. Oh, and this video is also sponsored by Casetify, so thanks for sponsoring. I've always had a case on my phone because I accidentally throw it or drop it or something. And so I've been loving these Casetify cases. Casetify cases are known for how good they are at protecting your phone. I in fact did a drop test and while it was pretty scary to do so, my phone survived just fine and the front didn't crack at all. I also feel like getting a new case sometimes feels like you're getting a new phone but for way cheaper because it breathes new life into your phone. They have a ton of prints to choose from and you can also customize your own case where you can choose your own color and font. So if you want to match phone cases with me, go to caseify.com slash Mayuko and get 20% off today. The link is also in the description box down below and Caseify, thanks so much for sponsoring. The next one I feel like is a back to school essential for me because I don't go anywhere without them even when I'm home. And that's like my water bottle. Right now I'm just using like a Contigo one that I picked up at Target. It holds like I don't know, almost like a liter of water and it's a straw. I bought this one because I wanted something that I could use to drink water like while I'm driving, like it fits in a cup holder. It's a straw top so I don't have to like spill water all over my face. Now that we're not really like going to places, this is just what I have. But again, like when you're going to class and you're like hauling a lot of stuff, I used to use a Hydro Flask uh, water bottle, but they're really, really heavy. And so having something a little bit more lightweight and the only weight that you're carrying is the water was something that's really important and really helped me to like avoid back injury basically. I always have this right next to me on my desk even now. I feel like while you're working or studying, it's a really good opportunity to hydrate. And also it's just important to hydrate if you're sitting for long periods of time. And so just make sure you hydrate folks with a really good water bottle. So those are all the physical things that I use on a day-to-day -day basis now and also that I used in college and while I was in school that really helped me with my learning. And now I wanna talk about things that you can do to your space that can help with that too. And the first of which is music. I'm someone who likes to listen to music while studying. It's good white noise for me and if it's the right kind of music, I feel like it gets my brain juices flowing and it makes me think better and it gets me into that kind of like, I'm gonna do work and study mood. 
And this should come as no surprise, but it's chill hop, everybody. Lo-fi hip hop all day, every day for me. When I was in college, that genre didn't really like exist. And so I listened to a lot of new Jabez and Uyama Hiroto who create like really chill, nice beats to study to. But in 2020, chill hop, lo-fi, hip hop stuff is everywhere, which is great. And so there's a couple of playlists that I love listening to on Spotify, as well as like a SoundCloud playlist that I made for myself that I listen to when I'm studying. The second thing that you can do to your space to help you study is to associate studying with a smell. There's a lot of science about how smell and your olfactory senses are really, really strong at associating certain memories and certain moods and environments. And so I use that as a way to also help me create a nice environment. So usually when I'm studying or working, I either have a candle on or I spray some perfume on myself, or maybe it's just the smell of coffee. Right now I'm burning this one, which is Meraki white tea and ginger. I picked this up in Norway during my honeymoon in Scandinavia last year and it just smells so good. It's a very clean scent uh, and I like this one. I also have been using a perfume sample that I got from Aesop, which is also very like woody, but also floral. And the last thing that I do to help with creating a space is to find a quiet space to work in. Now I know this one's tricky because I know a lot of y'all are moving back in with your parents or you have roommates or something, but I do think that having a focused, quiet study space, which you know in traditional terms might be going to like a library or a lab, uh, is really important to have a place to think. So I think there's two ways to go about this. One is to drown out everybody else with something like noise canceling headphones, which I sometimes use, or you can have a conversation with the people you live with and negotiate kind of like a quiet study time so that you can set boundaries for yourself and for them so that you can still get this quiet study time that you need like on a schedule or something. And the last thing that I wanna talk about, which is neither like a physical thing or a space is a system that you can set up for yourself. So when you're going to school, I think one of the best things about going to school physically is that you're seeing other people, um, you're working with them, you are studying with them, you're interacting with your teacher, but because of COVID times, we're not really doing that because we wanna be safe and not give Corona to everybody. But I think there is a lot of value in seeing people face to face and having that be a motivator for you to get your work done. So a system that I think could really help you with this is to find a way for you and your friends to hold each other accountable. I show this in the recent vlog, but I have a stand up with my friends like every day, Monday through Friday, uh, where we just talk about what we did yesterday and what we're gonna do today. And that alone has been really helpful in one, getting me out of bed and two, talking to other people about what I'm gonna do. But it really is just about checking in with each other and supporting each other, especially through this like, weird time in history in which y'all are going back to school. So that's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to click subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this and leave a comment down below and tell me what essentials that you have for this upcoming school year. I will see you in the next one and hope you have a great day wherever you are. Bye.